viewers, welcome to yet another edition of NASCOM Tech Talks. I'm Neha Jain, Senior Analyst with NASCOM Insights. Last month, we celebrated the World IP Day on April 26th. On the same day, we also released our annual patent reports 2024 edition, Patenting Trends in India, Fostering an IP-led Digital Economy. The report highlighted the significant patent filing during FY23, primarily led by educational institutions. It also mentioned Tamil Nadu as the leading state in terms of patent filing. Now, if I have to merge the two, I get the name of the leading institution from the state, which is the second home to my guest today, and you must have guessed it by now, IIT Madras. Now, when it comes to IP creation, IIT Madras has created milestones in FY24, with 435 patents granted, which is more than double the previous year's number. According to experts, this FY24 number is one of the highest for an, any academic institution in India. IIT Madras also achieved its goal of filing one patent a day by putting out 378 patents in FY24 compared to 233 in FY23. Further, the institute is aiming for 450 to 500 patents in the next year. The Institute not only focuses on IP creation, but also takes it to the next level. Through its Office of Industrial Consultancy and Sponsored Research, which focuses on intellectual property and technology transfer. It also has a legal cell to take care of any agreements associated with the process. And this is the area that we will be talking about today in our discussion. On that note, I take immense pleasure in inviting Dr. Dara Ajay, Head Technology Te uh, Technology Transfer Office TTO IPM cell of IIT Madras. Dr. Dara is an intellectual property and technology transfer professional with over 12 years of experience in handling broad range of intellectual property management, including patent valuation, technology license, portfolio management, but no negotiations. With keen insights on patent law, Dr. Dara's core expertise lies in IP commercialization, technology licensing, IP valuation, IPR policy drafting, and negotiating IP clauses and agreement drafting. Welcome, Dr. Dara, for today's session. Thank you, Neha. Thank you very much uh, for a pre intro. I'm really glad to be part of the NASCOM Insight Sites. And uh, first of all, I would like to congratulate the whole team of the NASCOM for you know, preparing such an informative and uh, thought provoking, uh, insightful uh, patent trends report for the last year. It was a very, uh, very insightful report generated, and uh, IATM being part of it uh, and acknowledged in that report is also highly appreciated. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you, Dr. Dara, for such kind words. Now, moving ahead, Dr. Dara, we just spoke with uh, spoke about IIT Madras and the numbers for FI24, which clearly highlight that IIT Madras is a great success story when it comes to IP creation and particularly patent filing. Would request you to share some more insights on the overall numbers and what are the areas of focus for IP creation for IIT Madras? Sure, Neha. I mean, uh... In the last year, we have uh, ex exceptionally done well in terms of not only the IP creation, but also as well as the technology transfer. So in a milestone achievement, IIT Madras has witnessed an exponential increase of both uh, filing as well as grant of the patents. Crossing, uh, I mean, the grant patents have crossed more than 400 per year. And as you have already mentioned, the filing have gone beyond 378 for the financial year. And also in terms of the technology transfer, we have achieved uh, uh, significantly and have been part of the successful technology transfers under national uh, IP day celebrations uh, happened in New Delhi, where three out of the 13 inventions, 13 inventions were selected by uh, Indian Patent Office for displaying, among which uh, three out of the three inventions were from the IIT Madras Technology Transfer Office uh, Thing falling under the sustainable development goal. So in mm -hmm. terms of numbers, in terms of numbers, uh, as you have already mentioned, when compared to the last, we have not only doubled our numbers in terms of filing, but also the grants have been exponentially increased. And uh, we could also see uh, upright uh, rise in terms of the international filings and grants as well. 
So somewhere, if you see a uh, uh, ballpark figures, uh, the total IPs filed in India are approximately 2,000 and granted are around 1,200, and total filed in 1,100 and. Uh, uh, total IPs filed outside India are approximately uh, 700 and plus uh, IPs and our international grants are crossing beyond 200 like, in IIT Mudra. Now, these are the mm -hmm. IP numbers uh, which have significantly impacted uh, uh, under various technology grounds as well. Sure, yes, sure. Those, those are very impressive numbers and significant uh, you know, innovation that we see from your end. Now, um, Dr. Dara, as you you know, you lead the technology transfer office at IIT Madras, and we see that a lot of commercialization and licensing activities are done through the office. Now, for for our, for other institutions that want to progress on the same path, I would request you to please share how the you know TT office came into being. What are the best practices followed, which will be you know a good learning for other institutes who want to really excel on that path. Yes, definitely. Uh, so here the office of ICSR, the, which is Industrial Consultancy and Sponsored Research, is established in 1973. So people, when they, I mean, people might think that the tech transfer office has evolved, but uh, the activity, the seed activity, which has been started, was from the 1973. At that time, it was uh, called as a sponsored research project. So this office was opened with very limited number, like three to five people have been sitting here who dedicatedly work only on the industrial commercialization and industry academic interactions, collaborations. So our office also not only handles the IP, IP and tech transfer is one vertical. Uh, unlike our office also handles the sponsored research projects, consultancy projects, Consortium projects with respect to main institutes like ISRO, DRDO, TCS, and others. We also have a Center for Excellencies. Center for Excellencies are the consortium bodies of an industry academic uh, coming together for a specific uh, expertised area and try to having an association to resolve the problem. Among that all, we also have an R&D innovation awards uh, handled by ICSR, and we have a intellectual property management cell, uh, which has been established uh, 10 years back, a decade ago, which has which was maintaining, uh, which has evolved, I would say, as and time uh, as and when time required, and uh, we have evolved uh, a process flow in a structured manner that we do have now the IP prosecution separated technology transfer separated and the prosecution we have separate verticals like analytics look into the assessment of the idf uh, docket operations will look into the docketing activities of the idfs and tech transfer also has an established so what happened is uh, earlier we used to be called as an intellectual property management cell which was maintained uh, as such all the activities uh, under one umbrella and uh, in the recent year when professor getu has transferred is, uh, I mean, when Professor Manu was the uh, Dean of ICSR, uh, uh, then uh, Professor Manu has specifically has a vision that we should have a separate vertical for tech transfer. And that's where he has hired me. And in the recent years, last two years, we have opened a tech transfer office separated out from the operations, analytics, and tech transfer. In tech transfer also, we do have a specific segment such as a uh, we have a business development team very dedicated for the industry outreach. We have a portfolio management team. We have a marketing team who would go out and outreach. So we we have a predefined thing. So overall, if you see the technology transfer uh, activity wise, it is started at 1973, continuing till now. 50 years is what we have celebrated. That's what my logo shows in behind. However, if the establishment of an office as tech transfer office with a tangible office space, dedicated staff and others, we have evolved in the last three years. Sure. So I think the whole initiative of having a separate tech transfer office dedicated people who are looking after it is, is really a good strategy and that kind of helps you, you know, uh, get to the industry better. Yes. Sure. Now, uh, we just discussed about, you know, uh, the tech transfer office. So I would also like to know, you know, if uh, how many IPs have you been able to commercialize so far and how the Institute is benefiting from this whole approach? 
Yeah. See, uh, there are two sets of uh, understandings one you should uh, always make. Uh, I mean, the numbers are not how many IPs in a sense. Uh, there could be many IPs with less value. There could be one IP with high value. Yes. So yes, rather yes. than the uh, number game, I would just like to shed some lights on the quality IPs and the numbers. So in fact, if you can see that uh, IIT Madras has been top in terms of technology commercialization from past uh, three consecutive years that the Indian Patent Office now kept a norm in the NARF and other ranking said that uh, the, pers uh, the entity who has uh, won the last year are not eligible to apply for the coming award. So <laughs> this year we were not able to apply. The reason was uh, last year, 2023, we were not able to apply because we already got 21, 20, 22, 21 and 22, the best commercialization awards. So uh, if you can see uh, the number of IPs, what we are transferring are a lot more than others. So on an yeah. average, our percentage wise, if you see, uh, we are standing around like 15 to 20 percentage of IPs is what we transfer of all which we have generated. And in, uh, in a random numbers, if you were to see, I think you could see in our technology transfer website and technology transfer social handles like LinkedIn also we posted is approximately two to three IPs I would be licensing out per month. So somewhere based on the uh, technology and others, if you see I would transfer technology licensing happens like one, two, three in a uh, month, which is approximately mm -hmm. 18 to 24 in a year. That's a mm -hmm. random figures is what I can say in terms of a uh, number of IPs generated. Now, in terms of value generated, yes, again, we are on top, not only in terms of, uh, because if you see in the other institute, I'm, I'm not sure if they are having such an aggressive uh, one to two licensing a month, because licensing is a very critical aspect uh, and the success rate of licensing purely depends on the negotiation strategies and the requirements of the other team. So in our case, uh, we have a professional approach that we try to crack a lot of deals that are coming through. Uh, as I told, uh, if I'm making uh, three or one or two technology transfers a month, which means I'll be having negotiations approximately 10 times the high, like I'll be having 20 negotiations that month of which I could only conclude uh, one or two. So that's, uh, that's the process flow. In terms of value generation also, IITM has a, a very high uh, value patents generated. So if you can see our cumulative revenue for the last uh, 20 years, it is around uh, 34 crores. 34 crores is what we have generated purely on the IP like technology transfer. And royalties are still flowing in. Uh, that is the scale of uh, numbers of the technology transfer of, uh, uh, that the IIT Madras is doing. And that, those, are, those are really good numbers and very, very wonderful, you know, achievement, I would say. If, if you know, if the, the technology transfer office has come into being and in, in the over on, only in the last three years, then mm. I think that's that's kind of a significant achievement. But I'm sure, you know, a lot of work has, has uh, happened over the last 50 years which has mm. come to fruition through the technology transfer office. Now, that's what has to be highlighted. I was about to say, you have said that the last 50 years is what the best practices that the office has established. Unlike uh, I bought in the best practices of the international standard through the tech transfer office, because I am a certified professional from the WIPO and other training, I have got a STEM training where we had a process flow of TTs which were established uh, and we have a regular updates given to our dean icsr takes regular updates on the how what is the progress in terms of uh, technology licensing and we also uh, focus very specifically now in the current era we are focusing more in terms of sustainable development goals so the current uh, uh, current era is requirement of the sustainable inventions, which is uh, benefiting not only us, but also the society and the planet. So we are working more to transfer and translate the technologies which are in the field of sustainable development goals. And if you see the numbers, as I told, as I speak, the last licensing ceremony happened on 14th of May. And we were planning one licensing today this is Jane and Jones. So as I told, uh, on an average, we are having two licensing agreements. 
and every mm-hmm. licensing agreement we sign we will also try to post it in our linkedin pages as well sure so i think the audience should follow the linkedin page and probably they'll also gain a lot of insight into what is happening what are the area of focus and what is uh, what is basically you know uh, gaining more and more traction from an industry perspective also sure sure now, uh, moving forward, uh, you know, I just want to understand, do you think any strategic licensing or partnership models that you might have followed with either industry or academia in India or abroad, which have been proven to be a successful model for, you know, IP creation, licensing, and that kind of uh, has helped over the years? Yes. Uh, I mean, when you... Uh, when you talk about the strategic uh, alien, I mean, strategic partnership for a successful licensing, I would say it resides in the negotiation, and the negotiation has to be clear what the other party wants. So, my success rate is I will not try to sell what I have in hand to the partner. Okay. I would try to sell what the partner needs and try to handpick the uh, technologies of my portfolio, which is meeting the criteria of the requirements of the partner. So sure. when you have your first set of interactions, there is no like uh, perfect matchmaking that I have a patent document and the industry wants to take it out. So I would first uh, get the interest saying that, OK, we are looking into this technology area. I'm looking into the uh, something like NDE technology, nanotechnology, or 5G, something like that. So we have to have, we have to pull out the information which is available at our end and try to give them and showcase a display of all the technologies. Okay, we have a greater variant of uh, uh, similar technologies in within the field of his use, and the industry partner would set forth his requirement. No, no, my specific requirement is like this, and. In case we match with that specific requirement, yes, we would pitch in that patent application in detail with an inventor. We'll have multiple rounds, not just one. In certain cases, the industry partner will also come visit it, visit our sites. They check the proof of concept, how it is going through. In other cases, the industry partner requests us to come and show the same prototype being working at their environment, which we have also have done. So after multiple iterations uh, of technology uh, readiness level being assessed very particularly by the industry partner and showing an interest, then comes the financial discussion. What is the value of that IP? How much it should be? And uh, how we are negotiating in terms of the terms and condition. So that is where the success rate uh, resides, I would rather say. So if you were to, if you were to just uh, keep uh, the success rate, understand the requirements. If you understand the requirements, what the industry partner wants, you will pitch in. So in, a, in your case, if the industry wants only in India jurisdiction, there's no point of giving my US and PCT applications. Exactly. In my case, the industry wants only in one specific uh, field of use. Unlike my application is a platform application can be kept in multiple uses. Uh, so I would try to discuss with the industry partner, understand their needs and uh, try to propose a term sheet based on the requirements and always it has to be a win-win situation that uh, both the parties should not be greedy enough to take it at no cost and both the parties should not be lenient enough to give it at uh, no penny cost right so it has to be a win-win situation for both parties that uh, we negotiate in favor of a win-win situation draft the term sheets accordingly once the term sheet is uh, agreed upon then we both the parties will have the licensing signing ceremony happened and we transfer the technology and after the transfer of the technology uh, we give a reasonable support by the professors uh, to help out to translate the technology from one trl level to another sure sure uh, just just moving a little away from now the IP part, you know, recently we heard that IIT was in news for raising uh, 513 crores in funding for FI24, which is uh, which is being cited as more than double of last year's 231 crores. So how I would like to know, you know, how does the institute plan to use the same and how do you and do you think the innovation efforts of the institute over the last years have been a key driver there? See, we have two offices. What you have to understand is the uh, office of ICSR is industrial consultancy and sponsored research. 
so our office handles all the interactions of industrial consultancy and we make a turnover of 1000 crores as well so our uh, our turnover for a financial year is approximately beyond 1000 for the last two financial years we have crossed the turnover of 1000 and this includes the projects both from the government bodies projects from the ministries uh, industries and uh, uh, every project now there's one more office called a social corporate responsibility csr office uh, corporate social responsibility csr office and this office has a separate dean. So our office of ICSR is headed by Professor Manu. And that office of uh, CSR is headed by Professor Mahesh Panchangula. He is the dean of uh, ACR. And uh, his office is run by uh, Ravi, uh, Kavi Raj, uh, who is the CEO. So they collect uh, donations from the alumnus and other entities under CSR grant and under various alumnus grant and they have generated a revenue of 500 crores which is very very tremendous achievement I would say. I mean among IITs it is very rarely to see that uh, on an yearly basis you get a commitment of 500 crores as a, a donation from CSR and other entities. So this fund is away from that our office we are not responsible for it. Okay. So, However, the fund, whatever the uh, CSR office is received, that will be utilized for various social purposes. And in that social purposes, there are certain places wherein there is an involvement of the IP, uh, which is being generated for a social cause. So I have an IP which is being generated for a social cause. So uh, these uh, uh, funding would be enhanced or utilized for generating such technologies. So. Professors, if they are coming up with something which is removing poverty out of the, uh, wanted to plan something, a research background such as uh, removing poverty, green energy and kind of thing. There are, and it should fall, uh, they have a set norm. So they have to follow the government norms and they have uh, uh, sections driven segmentations of which section is covering which uh, technology classification. So they will check through. And if it falls under that category, they would also help in the innovation. Otherwise, they have that's another office. They have their set goals and achieve uh, uh, goals and objectives which they meet. And uh, without any certainty of doubt, I would say that ACR office has been a backbone of generating a lot of technologies uh, for the benefit of human, I mean, for the benefit of the society. Sure. Yeah. Sure. Well, that's but that's a wonderful uh, achievement and I think a lot of work that is being done at IIT is definitely paying, playing a role where you know you you get a lot of lot of credible support from the industry from the alumnists yes. because yes. of the kind of work that has been done over the years now yes. just just towards the last question that I had for the discussion today Dr. Dara any recommendations that you have for key stakeholders, say government, uh, you know, trade bodies, IP office, industry, etc., that you think can still be done, you know, to support the overall IP creation and overall making it a robust IP system in India? Yeah. Hey, uh, for the Indian Patent Office, uh, I guess uh, the current Controller General, Mr. Unnath Pandit, is doing an excellent job. After he uh, taken in charge the number of IPs, I mean, so be it in terms of filing, so be it in terms of grants. I think the last year the grants were crossing one lakh, which is also a, a benchmark figure which never have been heard in Indian Patent Office. He has a special emphasis on the geographical uh, indication as well, which is also is very critically handled and has been boosted a lot, GI and other products. Now to the government uh, technology transfer also, they are trying to make the Form 27 very easy, I think, which is good. In terms of government, I think government DBT, DST has already has funded a lot of uh, uh, projects which have gone into the technology transfer office. My understanding they were DBT, have, Bayrak DBT has uh, uh, funded seven technology transfer offices. Likewise, DST also has their own uh, tech transfer offices established in various jurisdictions of India. Now, what I would rather suggest here is uh, all the IITs are together, yes, uh, uh, and all the IITs are not having the same level of bandwidth of IIT Madras. 
So if you can see the amount of success rate, what we see, the, I mean, my team size itself is also is very big. Uh, we are we are all together, uh, including operations, analytics, BD, uh, portfolio, everything comes to close to 35 to 40 members, which is a very huge number because of the numbers that we are handling and kind of money that we are making. So what I see is there are IITs like very new IITs, Palakkad or maybe Tirupati or very where IITs which have been formed in the last five years or 10 years, where the manpower, resource and the infrastructure might not facility. So we should, uh, I mean, all the IITs should plan to have a single tech transfer office like that of the CSAR, if you have seen. All the CSAR institutes IP is being maintained at the uh, New Delhi through the central body, one office. Why I'm saying this is because, uh, see, I've been negotiating some of the licensing agreement for IIT Tirupati through director. The director requests, uh, which means that we are supporting other IITs in terms of tech transfer as well. However, if we are having all the IITs boarded into a single platform as right. one, because it would greatly help the other institutes, the kind of uh, aggressive uh, technology outreach that we do. We do an outreach on uh, website. I do an outreach in LinkedIn. I do an outreach in all the social handles and I do outreach uh, through focused BD analysts who are sitting in my, uh, with respect to each analyst is given an idea. They will go back and reach out to the industries. They'll try to persuade through emails. They'll try to persuade through phone calls. They'll go out to the conferences. As I speak, they are, they are attending a conference on 24th, I guess, in Chennai World Trade Center. So uh, they attend the conference. They get me the leads from there. And uh, we do a lot of uh, theme-based specific outreach. So our approach is very international standards. Now, we don't want IIT Madras to stand. I mean, we are already in a premium institute in terms of all the IITs. And, uh, we are at a top. Now, what we wanted to leverage is that we wanted to go beyond India and we wanted to stand amongst the international universities. So mm -hmm. when you talk, uh, we wanted to at least be top in the Asia, Now, uh, start from the Asia as a goal. That's what is proposed, that we will be putting ourselves in a place where we should be recognized among Asia. Then we will compare to the all United States and UK institutes as well. Sure. Yeah. Sure. So I think uh, with that, uh, we are coming to the close. But I, before we do that, I would really appreciate the kind of work that is being done at IIT Madras. And this is for the second year that I, I was uh, connecting with the team at IIT Madras. And last year also we had featured. So whenever we talk and we talk about IP creation, we talk about patents. I think that is the first name that stucks us every year because of the kind of tremendous work that is being done at your end. So I would like to congratulate the home IIT Madras team for all the milestones created uh, over the last year. Thank so you. thank you. Thank you, Dr. Dara. And before I call it a close, um, I would like to thank you for Don joining the session today. I'm sure the audience would have gained a lot of insights into IP commercialization, the whole technology transfer process, and so much more that can be done at their end if they really want to go this path. Uh, viewers, we have more such insights covered in our report, and the link for the same is in the below description box. Go check it out. And also our other videos on Indian tech sector. To receive instant notification on new videos on our channel, be sure to click the bell icon. If you found this video interesting, please share it with your friends and colleagues. That's all for now, and see you soon. And thanks again, Dr. Dara, for joining us today. Thank, Thank you so you much. Very, Thank you very much, Neha, for this interview and uh, insightful discussion. Uh, pleasure having uh, discussions with you. And thanks for NASCOM as well for considering IIT Madras in all their insightful reports as well. And to the audience also, if you feel like uh, we are always available for the other IITs as well as others, we wanted the maximum technologies to be going into the market and the market be flourished with latest technologies and these technologies be at an affordable rate, useful for everyone and uh, accessible to everyone under and also be more in terms of sustainable, sustainable technologies. And I'm happy that uh, I am being part of this uh, tremendous uh, good cause, which has been going through throughout us. And I'm playing a small, minute role. Uh, thank you very much. Namaskar. Thank you.
Thank you everyone for watching.